Good morning, everybody. For today's Technique Tuesday, I thought that we could do a little review on fire because fire is so important in our lamp work. Um, so join me. We're going to talk about torches and flames and oxygen and propane and all of that wonderful stuff. Okay, before we turn the fire on, let me talk a little bit about the torch that I use. Now, today's, um, today's tutorial is going to be specific to the Nortel Miner, um, which is the silver torch. I, I'm working now on a Nortel Mega Miner, which is the red torch. Not quite sure the difference between the two, but I've been using miners like forever. Um, the past 20 years or so. I, I love them. They, they're great. I don't feel the need to go bigger, stronger, faster. Um, I, I like the miners. Um, so most of these torches have the same type of anatomy. You have a silver knob, which is your oxygen knob, and you have a red knob, which is your propane knob, and you have two ports in the back where you attach your oxygen to your silver knob port. You attach your propane to your propane knob port. And I'm using an oxygen concentrator, uh, five liters per minute, five LPM. And my, um, my propane is just standard propane from the gas station. I have a regulator on it, and I'll talk more about that in a little bit. Now, the nozzle of the torch, the anatomy, if you look at it from the side there, it has all these little holes in it. Oh, let's see. I know you guys know what this is, but I'm going to try to show you anyways. And these types of torches are known as a surface mix torch. So the propane comes out of the little round holes in the center and the oxygen comes out of the spaces around the ports. So what happens is the propane gas comes out, the oxygen gas comes out, and then all of the gases mix right here at the front of the torch. And that's why it's called a surface mix torch. Um, so yeah. Let's get started on some flame types. Okay, so um, before we get started, let me let me tell you guys what my plan is. This year, I want to start doing some testing of glass and characterizing glass for you guys. Um, so far, what we've done is we we use this glass. You look at it online, and it's white. And you buy it, and it comes in the mailbox, and it's white. And you torch it, and it's white. Unless you get it really hot, then it turns clear. But it's white. When it cools, it's white. When you anneal it, it's white. Um, this glass is just stays white. And we use a very specific type of flame called a neutral flame to torch it. But I think for those of you out there who are new to lamp working, there is other types of glass that I want to start characterizing for you in the future, namely silver glass. And we're going to start just doing this very, very slowly, uh, one at a time, because I'm kind of new to silver glass myself. And silver glass does crazy wild magic tricks, depending on what kind of torching you do. So, before we can get to our silver glass tutorials, we need to talk about torches and we need to talk about flames. So, that is my goal today, is to just do a quick review of my torch and the flames that come out of it. Okay, before we talk about flame types, let's just talk about the anatomy of a flame. And I have my little pointer here. Hopefully you can see it. Now, when the gases come out of the head of your torch right here, they come out in what's called candles. 
And the candles are the little blue part of the flame right in here. And then on the top of the candles, you have what are called cones. And the candles are usually blue, and the cones are usually a bright, bright yellow, white um, color. And uh, yeah, that is the characteristics of what comes out first is your candles. And then you have your flame. I'm gonna try to back this up a little bit here. You have your standard flame. And your flame, there's different parts of it. Uh, you have the flame that's really hot right here at the front of the candles. And we don't use that too much. Um, it's a little too hot. It's used for something called fuming, which I don't do and I don't get into. And then about two inches up from, let me see if I can get this right. Two inches above the candles is kind of our working area. This is where we melt our glass. This is where we put our glass on. Um, this is the area that you want to use to to do most of your beadwork. And then you've got the very, very tippy top up here, which you can barely see, which is where we do stuff like putting on our stringers, uh, a lot of the work that you don't need a super hot flame to do. So those are the anatomy of your flame. So the first flame I want to talk about is called the neutral flame. And this is the flame that we use oh, about 90% of the time. And it is characterized by our little blue candles and our little cones on top of the candles. Usually those cones, I like to say they're about a millimeter in, um, in length from the blue part. So a little bit one millimeter. And this is just a neutral flame. It's called neutral because the amount of oxygen and propane coming out of the tip of your torch head is about even. It's, a, it's about a one to one ratio. And this is the flame that we all use all the time. The second flame I want to redo, review is called an oxidizing flame. And this flame, for me, it's characterized by a hissing sound. So when you turn up your oxygen, I hope you can hear it because my concentrator is so loud, you can hear that hiss. And you can also see when you turn up the oxygen, your cones will become more pointy. They'll become sharper than your neutral flame. And I do use an oxidizing flame a lot. I probably shouldn't, but I like to run kind of hot. This one's actually too much, but I will use the oxidizing flame. When you need a lot of heat, I think adding oxygen to a flame makes it run hotter. So there will be times when you want to run really, really hot. And we'll get into that as we move forward in our glass studies. But the oxidizing flame, just know that it's characterized by very, very sharp cones on the end of your candles and by that hissing sound that comes out of your torch. Okay, the final flame that I want to talk about that we're going to be using a lot when we look at silver glass is called a reduction flame. And so what does that mean to have a reduction flame or a reducing flame? Basically, what it means is that you are reducing the amount of oxygen in the surface of your torch that's coming out. So we are reducing oxygen, which means that the propane ratio is going to go up. Now, there's two ways that you can increase the propane. Number one is to just increase the propane. So I'm turning the red knob, my propane knob, up. I'm turning it up and I'm increasing the level of propane that is coming out. And you can see that when I do that, the cones will stretch out and they'll become very sharp and very pointy. 
and that is a reducing flame by you're reducing the oxygen by increasing the propane. The other way that you can reduce the oxygen and increase the propane is by simply turning the oxygen down. And when you do that, you can see the flame is kind of different. It's a lot fluffier. You don't have those pointy cones like you did before. Now, double helix, they talk about a reducing flame and a brush flame. And I think that the reducing flame is when you increase the propane and the brush flame is when you decrease the oxygen. So this is more of a brushy look to me, especially if you look at the top. It's very fluffy. It's very fluffy and brush-like. So that to me is a brush flame. But maybe those of you out there who have worked more with this double helix glass can confirm that that's what that is. Um, when we get into that, to the, the silver glass, some of it reduces well under a reducing flame and some of it you get good reducing with a brush flame. But we're going to go through all of that. Right now, I just want you guys to understand that there is two ways to get a reduction flame. One is to increase the propane and the other is to decrease the oxygen. Okay, and the final flame that I forgot to talk about is called a dragon's breath and or dragon's tongue. Um, I never use it, which is why I forgot to talk about it. But basically, a dragon's breath is when you have no oxygen at all. So my concentrator's turned off. My oxygen knob is closed. This is pure propane coming out of my torch. I think the Boro boys use it a lot, the people who make the boro silicate. But for lampwork beads, I don't know. I, again, I don't use it. So to me, whenever I put my bead into a dragon's breath like this, it turns all black and I get a lot of gray schmutz. So I don't use this. But it is a thing. It is out there and you guys should know about it. Okay, guys, I hope that made sense. I hope that I didn't confuse anybody. Uh, if I did, you guys might want to go check out the old internet and see what you can see about the different types of flames that we use in our lamp work. I would highly recommend going to the Double Helix website and reading some of their user guides. They have a very good description of the types of flames that are used to work with their glass. And I'm going to be referring to them a lot as we move forward in our studies. Have a great day. I'll be back soon with another video. Bye. Okay, guys, I hope that made sense. I hope that I didn't confuse anybody. Uh, if I did, you guys might want to go check out the old internet and see what you can see about the different types of flames that we use in our lamp work. I would highly recommend going to the Double Helix website and reading some of their user guides. They have a very good description of the types of flames that are used to work with their glass. And I'm going to be referring to them a lot as we move forward in our studies. Have a great day. I'll be back soon soon with another video. Bye!